Finally, Crosshair finds his humanity. I'm Nate, and today let's look at Bad Batch Season 2, Episode 12, The Outpost. In this episode, Crosshair is tasked with a mission to accompany an Imperial Lieutenant to the ice world of Barton 4 to re-establish security at an Imperial cargo facility. Written by Jennifer Corbett, Episode 12 was released on March 8, 2023 on Disney+. The episode starts on Coruscant, where Crosshair awaits his new mission commander. An Imperial officer walks past with several clones in civilian clothes following her and asking why they are being forced retired. She dismisses them, telling them to take their complaints to the Imperial Information Bureau. When Crosshair meets Lieutenant Nolan, his mission commander for the trip to Barton 4, Nolan scolds Crosshair for having his helmet off and then grumbles that more clones are going on the mission. He doesn't like working with old equipment. I've stated before that the theme of the season is freedom, and here we get an aspect of freedom that is rarely used to describe freedom, but is often used to characterize oppression. The aspect that I'm referring to is humanization, or in this case, dehumanization. Dehumanization is an attempt to rob someone of the qualities that make them a human being. When allowed to grow unchecked, it often manifests in physical slavery, but most of the time it simmers at less obvious levels that are just as potent psychologically, but not so much physically. In today's society, the most common arena for dehumanization is cancel culture. Upon arrival at Barton 4, Crosshair and Lieutenant Nolan meet Mayday, the clone commander in charge of the outpost. When Nolan rebukes him for his lack of security protocol, Mayday responds that almost all of his men have been killed. Nolan accuses Mayday of failing to do his job and declares that he is now in charge. After two crates of cargo are stolen by a raiding party of locals, Nolan orders Crosshair and Mayday to retrieve them despite the harsh weather conditions. As the season continues, I am finding that the Crosshair episodes are the most gripping. As Tech has stated before, Crosshair's nature is to be severe and unyielding, and as the series has progressed, this is what we've seen from him. He appears to be rather unaffected by death and killing, and most of us have been wondering what it will take to change him. I would argue that he is severely affected though. Up until now, he has hidden behind the moniker, good soldiers follow orders. He has shrugged off death around him because he's just following orders, or so he thinks. One of the things about good soldiers, whether they are engaged in heavy combat or even in the rear, is that they see the humanity in war. A dead body, whether it is a friend or foe, was previously a living, breathing human. Part of being human is being repulsed by the sight of seeing another human suffer. In the postmodern Western world, though, most people never encounter real suffering. They only hear about it in history class or from their grandparents or great-grandparents who survived the Great Depression and fought in World War II. As a result, curiosity about suffering has developed things such as horror movies, which allow audiences to mimic a response to suffering, even if it's to laugh at the absurdity of the film and thus feel human. But real suffering is not so fleeting. War veterans are often haunted by the memories of the people who once stood beside them but lost their lives. And we can see in Crosshair the pent-up emotions he has been suppressing finally being released in this episode. When confronted with the dehumanization of the clones, Crosshair must confront his own humanity and compassion. When Crosshair and Mayday come across the body of a dead enemy soldier, Mayday is appalled that the enemy would leave behind one of their own. But Crosshair's initial attitude is that the dead body is just dead weight. To which Mayday responds, Remind me not to die in your watch. This is a uniquely human desire, to not be left and forgotten when we die. Moments later, Crosshair is confronted with his own mortality when he steps on a landmine. Mayday rigs the mine so Crosshair can get away. As Mayday goes to hide in case it doesn't work, Crosshair fears that he may die, and thus he shows his humanity. So, there is hope for him. When Mayday is injured, Crosshair refuses to leave him there to die alone, like the enemy soldier they found earlier. And we finally see Crosshair show his compassion as he attempts to tend to Mayday and protect him as much as he can from the elements. This is the choice that we've been waiting for, to see Crosshair flip the switch and show that he does have agency and cares deeply about his fellow clones. Lieutenant Nolan, on the other hand, is the embodiment of the modern attitude about suffering. He's never been on a mission or seen someone die. He's clearly never considered the humanity in himself, much less others or even clones. As a result, his attitude towards the clones is harsh and uncompassionate. You could even say that he represents the old Crosshair. So when Crosshair kills Nolan, not only is it the choice to rebel against the Empire that we've been wanting to see from him, but it is a representation of him killing the old self and taking a step towards a more complete person. Overall, I thought this episode was the best one of the season so far. 
The writing was fantastic and the animation was top notch. Every movement relayed the emotions and condition of the character's inner thoughts. We didn't need a lot of dialogue to know what was going on in Crosshair or Mayday's head. This is something normally only done in live action. Let me know what you all think in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and if you like the content and the deeper discussion into the themes found in Star Wars, please hit the like button and subscribe to keep me in your feed.